Hello Storm fans and welcome to Inside Storm for another week proudly presented by Red Z. Red Z is the Australian lender that specialises in providing loans for the self-employed. I'm Sam Hargraves, your host, and it's an absolute pleasure to welcome him back all the way though from the Sunshine Coast this week, Peter Robinson. Robbo, how are you my friend? How is it up there? It's nice and sunny up here at the moment. The weather's good. I'm sure it is. We're to train them. Uh, Boys heading to Brisbane to take on the Broncos. Uh, let's get straight into a, a bit of footy here for the Red Z Report. Uh, another great week for the Melbourne Storm last week, and we'll talk about the preparation of the Broncos this week. But before we get into the game, the important ramifications that have come out of that round of footy, uh, the big moves on the ladder. So the Roosters losing to the Broncos 16 to 34 has them dropping all the way down to fifth. We then look at the fact that the Eels lost to Manly. That moves them down to third. And the Storm, with that 34-10 win over the Raiders, top two now just four points behind the undefeated Penrith Panthers. It's turned out to not only be a really good week on the field for the Storm, but also in terms of ladder positioning as well. Yeah, how good are the Panthers going at the moment? They look unbeatable. Um, I think as soon as I've seen the passing of Bob Fulton, every team just... You know, they honour people with effort, and they done that, the uh, the Sea Eagles against Parramatta, and, and that helped us out on the ladder. Um, you know, with the rule changes, there's, a, there's still a few things that the players have got to adjust to and get used to, and that's certainly hurt the Roosters the other night as well. Yeah, but we're nicely positioned at the moment. And the thing I love about Craig, and I've said it before, he, he respects every team with the preparation that he does uh, each week from last week. So this week will be no different. Broncos will be... They're up and about. They had a good win over the Roosters on their home ground, so it would have been an interesting game for us. And our condolences, of course, to the Fulton family, one of the first uh, group of four immortals uh, ever named in the game, and a state funeral awaits. And it's a, a very sad loss for the rugby league community and for the sports community in Australia, one of the greatest ever in all forms of the game as a player and a coach. Uh, and our condolences to the Fulton uh, family and the Sea Eagles and, and all the friends and people associated with Bob Fulton. He will be remembered very fondly for his enormous contribution to the game. Uh, as I mentioned, the win over the Raiders puts the Storm now into second place on the ladder. And what a win it was, Robbo. We went into the game, most people would have thought we were undermanned. The new big three, as we're liking to call them, uh, Cam Munster, uh, Harry Grant and Ryan Pappenhausen out of the side. But the next man up mentality that's been a pillar of the storm culture from day one really shone through on the weekend. Yeah, it was a slow start for us. Obviously, Canberra put 10 points pretty fast on us. I'll tell you what, it was cold down on the sideline as well. I wish they had me flannel at shirt. But as soon as the guys got back into the, um, I suppose, the structures that they prepared for Canberra, I uh, got a bit of momentum. Brendan Smith was amazing. Tommy Isaac, he was awesome. And, um, you know, when Nelson and Sarva Solomon came on, he was a handful as well. It was just really nice to see every time a new guy, or a guy that perhaps doesn't play a whole even first grade, comes into the system and knows his role and gets the job done for us. As you mentioned, 10 nil down in the first half, but Nelson is so for Solomona. Uh, I'll tell you what, gets the first points on the board. This is a man that you would never want running towards you, Robbo. I reckon his first try, I seen about three or four fellas on the ground. He just yes. left behind there. And I'm thinking, oh, I hate, I hate to see someone the size of Nelson. You know, when you're protecting your line, he's, he's more chance than, than most that he's always going to score that try and get out of the line. And particularly when he's so close to the line. Then I had a look at that young Starling trying to hold him up. I'm thinking, mate, if you're one-on-one with Nelson, you're no chance of preventing him putting the ball down. No, there's bowling balls that are very jealous of what Nelson or Sofa Solomona can do in just knocking people down. Uh, Tommy Eisenhuth gets his second try for the season, but it was the lead-up work that we absolutely love here from the Hines, these boys, Smoothie, and then uh, Cooper Johns, which started this run. How impressive to have each of these players playing their role. It just goes to show that not only the top-end talent the Storm have, but the up-and-coming talent, the young and the next generation that are coming through. And, and that's the exciting part, as you said, Sam. But the other thing that, that works really well is the unstructured football. That was just off the cuff, an offload from Dale and played off the back of that. And Tommy Eisen, he's such a good utility player. He's really smart. He's a smart footballer, Tommy. And he's strong, he's big, and he can play a whole heap of positions as well. He's having a terrific season for us, Tommy. And as I said, and it's hard to defend those. You know, when you get an offload, we've seen Kristen Welch. He's been able to get, I think he's number one offload in the NRL at the moment. As soon as you get an offload, they're really hard to defend, and that's why 
in those positions, it's so dangerous for the opposition. Geez, there was a time when Craig Bellamy might have almost sent you packing for saying unstructured football, but it is a, a wonderful addition to what the Storm were able to do now. The unpredictability that is getting brought to the table uh, so often, it's exciting and it's actually great to watch from a fan point of view and an entertainment point of view. And talking about uh, youngsters coming through the ranks, scoring his first try uh, in the famous purple of the Melbourne Storm, Trent Liero, how good was his try? Now, he wasn't letting anyone stop him when he got a sniff of that line. Well, Trent's another young fella that's got a lot of size about him as well. He's uh, he has good lead-up work by he by Chris Lewis, and just on Chris Lewis, he he's, he was playing five eight, which is usually a back row where Trent usually where Trent scored that try. But there was nothing. As soon as Trent got hold of that ball, there was nothing going to stop him from getting over that line. And it's nice to see the players get around him to acknowledge his first his first NRL try. Uh, it's a great highlight of the game and and one that uh, each player that gets to experience that never ever forgets. Now. So a 34 to 10 win, second place on the ladder now, and the Broncos this week. We've mentioned a few times though that there are a fair few injuries mounting up at the Storm. So we caught up with Frank Panisi uh, to get an injury update. Frank, thanks for joining us. Uh, here to give us a quick injury update. Firstly, to Paps. Yeah, look, Paps uh, won't play on Thursday night at the moment. Uh, the, the medical staff are closely monitoring uh, Paps. He hasn't done anything since the, the incident there against St George and. The back end of this week, he might do, do some light stuff. So, yeah, he's definitely out of Thursday night. And at this stage, I have to say, he's uh, quite doubtful for the first date of origin, should he be selected. OK. Uh, and Harry, how's he looking? Yeah, Harry's looking pretty good, actually. He's uh, we touch and go for Thursday night. He'll he'll uh, increase his running today at training. And, and on Wednesday, he might get close to full training. So, look, he's a chance for Thursday night. Uh, but um, if not, he'll definitely if be right for... Origin 1, again, if selected. Fantastic. And how's our, our mate Munster looking? Yeah, it's probably the other way. Munster's had a bit of a setback, or not so much a setback, but probably hasn't uh, healed as, as quickly as uh, we'd all hoped to be. He won't play Thursday night, and a bit like uh, Ryan Pappenhausen, he'll, he's in some doubt for Origin 1 at this stage. Uh, but again, we'll see how the next few days go before um, you know any indication about Origin 1. Okay. And how's Husey looking? Good, yeah, he's good. He's uh, touch wood. He should hopefully be training this afternoon and uh, or, or part of the session. And we expect him to train fully on Wednesday. And at this stage, unless there's any setbacks, we you know we think he'll play on Thursday night. And finally, Kenny and Riley Jacks. Yeah, uh, Kenny's probably uh, again. He's a 50-50 for Thursday night. Being a hamstring, we're a little bit more conservative with hamstrings. Uh, he'll he'll do a little bit of training today, but not too much. Uh, I'd say he'd be doubtful for Thursday, but uh, we'll give him every opportunity to play. And Jaxie? Jaxie, uh, he's pulled up well from his concussion last week. He obviously has gone through all the, you know, the right procedures to, to cut return back to training. He, he was training a, a little bit on the weekend and again expect him to complete most of the session today. And if he gets through uh, on Wednesday, we'll, uh, he'll be given every chance to play on, on Thursday night. Fantastic. Thanks, Frank. My pleasure, Oz. Frank Panisi there with an injury update. So some big names in that and just again highlighting how good the performances have been from the Storm to be able to keep winning uh, with that injury toll that they're enduring at the moment. Uh, turning our attention now to my favourite round of the year and I'm not alone in that. Uh, this weekend is the NRL's Indigenous round where we celebrate the enormous contribution uh, to not only the game of rugby league from our Indigenous and First Australians but also to our culture and our country overall. It is a fantastic initiative and one that we look forward to every single year and one of the highlights of it is the Indigenous jersey and each year an Indigenous artist designs our jersey. This year the design was by Crystal Petrevsky and who's joining us uh, on Inside Storm. Crystal, hello to you. Hello, how are you? Thank you for having me. No, well thank you for coming and, and for the amazing work you do. We're going to show the jersey in just a moment but tell us a little bit about yourself, your community, where your mob's from. Yep, yeah so I'm Chris Petrovsky and I'm a proud Gijanjara woman from Halls Creek in Western Australia. So Halls Creek, a small Aboriginal remote community, um, is approximately about eight hours inland from Broome. So obviously a lot of people will know where Broome is on the outer skirts, but um, yeah, we're, we're inland and in the desert um, of Western Australia. And yeah, that's where, that's where I'm from. Um, a bit about Halls Creek, you know, everyone knows everyone, everyone's related to everyone somehow. Um, whether through through blood or through skin, um, through skin group, um, and yeah, very close knit community. Um, we're all we're all one together, and very traditional as well. So we're very, very strong in our culture back home, strong in Indigenous culture, um, 
and living traditionally and yeah, living with our, our ways. Hey, Crystal, Rob, I'm up here at the, uh, the Sunshine Coast. In terms, of the, in terms of the design, and before we get to that, I just want to um, just tell you how blessed we are for you to be able to do this for us. And we're going to have a conversation about the jumper again tonight, but yeah. we're really honoured to have you do, uh, do this design for us. and uh, It's an amazing artwork that you've done. Can you just tell us a little bit about, that, about the artwork? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, very big thank you to Melbourne Storm for giving me the opportunity to design this jumper and obviously to represent my people and my culture through my artworks and to represent the club. Um, you know, this is a very amazing club and I'm very, very grateful to be given the opportunity to represent the club and what they value and what they stand for through, through my artwork, um, which is really exciting. So yeah, a bit about the jumper. So the two circles, so we have one on the top right and then also one on the bottom. So they, obviously, they represent the two hubs, uh, sorry, one represents the Queensland hub and then one represents Victoria Amy Park, so our two homes um, in 2020. So obviously, yeah, the club had to relocate into the hub. So with these two designs, can you see we have um, all these symbols inside? So they obviously represent all the, all the people that worked behind the scenes in Victoria as well as in Queensland in the hubs, you know, the families, um, the partners, the, the children, um, all the staff that had to stay back in Melbourne, um, all the staff that had to go up to Queensland and leave their lives here in Victoria. So that we really wanted to acknowledge everyone that was a part of the journey um, that didn't get that recognition um, externally. And so there's the border, there's a border around it that actually represents the Victorian border on an angle. So if you turn the jersey sideways, I'm not sure which side it is, but... <laughs> You can see oh, there the, it is. you can see the there Queensland you, you can see the Queensland border yeah so that again re, um, resonates with you know Victoria is home we are from Victoria and really highlighting um, yeah where we come from and um, yeah being Melbourne Storm you know really basing our home of Victoria and so that that design represents obviously our journey going from Victoria to the hubs and then obviously returning back to Victoria because that is really important and um, with the year Victoria had last year through COVID and um and you know Storm really wanted to. Um, show their love to, to, the, to their home state and, you know, the people back here that had, to, um, that had to go through that. And so in the design, we have all these symbols here. They all represent, so St Storm, you know, very cultured club, um, very diverse as well. So that, that represents, you know, all the different cultures and backgrounds that come within the club and to really show that diversity within, within Storm, which is something really special to be a part of um, being a Melbourne Storm person. And, and yeah, to really show that, yeah, to really show everyone all coming together, no matter where you come from, who you are, your background, you know, all that different walks of life all coming together. Um, so here we have the river. So that river also resonates on the back of the jumper as well. That represents the Yarra River, again, symbolising um, Victoria. And obviously that is a... She's holding it a job you know, across as a right would <laughs> Yeah, and that is obviously a key... Um, component for the Wurundjeri people and the people of Victoria. So, so really, you know, something very special to Victoria and they call that home and they, that really connects them to the country and, um, and, and Victoria. So yeah, that, that's the Yarra River. Um, sorry, we'll scoot back to the front, sorry. <laughs> um, here we have the footprints. So the footprints represent, so, you know, Melbourne Storm, like I said, you know, very, very proud and very strong club. And they, you know, when you come to this club, you don't only develop as a player, but you also develop off the field. So, you know, you grow as a person, um, through, through the values of, of the club and through being a part of this program. So that, that foot, those footprints you know, represent obviously coming through the journey from where you're starting, even as staff members and anyone a part of the program, you know, coming through mm. learning and developing within this program and leaving or going through, the, going through the program and becoming a better person and player, which is something that, you know, the club really prides themselves on because, you know, you're not just foot, um, rugby players in the end, you know, you're people and that's something that's really important. Um, then we're going to scoot over. So that design inside the Victoria also resonates onto the sleeves, just to really highlight that and embrace that, you know, and also you wear your heart on your sleeves. So that's something that's really important to, to, to hold that on the sleeves as well. Um, and then we go up to the back of the jumper. Yeah, here we go. There we go. Sorry. It's OK. Um, so the handprint represents the five values of the club. And, you know, that's what people live and breed here in Melbourne Storm. So to really highlight our mm. five values through the hand symbol is something really important. Um, so yeah, we got our five values, and then on the just below that we have all our play, uh, all our indigenous players that have come through the club. Their last names on the jersey, which is something really important. So not only our current players are on there, we have all our past Beautiful. players that have come through. And then this is something that I think is really special on the jumper. So this represents we have thirty symbols that. Oh, sorry, not thirty. We have um, I can't really tell you the exact number right now, but we have. 
the exact number of all the all the current players that are currently playing on the squad wow. on the squad and team right now. So you know, it is it is Indigenous round, and we, we we really want to acknowledge our Indigenous players. But um, but for me, you know, it's important to acknowledge our non-Indigenous players and those people who come and acknowledge our culture, which Beautiful. is something that is really important. So yeah, that's that's something special for all the players that are going to be wearing the jumper this week, and all the players are part of the club currently. Um, to to for them to be recognised on the jumper because you know we teach them and then they go out and teach 10, 20 other people and that, that's what's powerful and that's really important, you know, them, them teaching others and them um, really acknowledging our, our culture, which is something that, yeah, I, I extremely love and um, I hope that they do too. And that's, that's our I think jumper that in, a, in a nutshell, yeah. Uh, that's phenomenal. You've done an amazing job and beautifully explained. I'm going to put that there. Uh, and clearly it <laughs> means the world to you to have been able to, have been, having been able to design uh, this magnificent yep. jersey. Thank you very much. Yeah, it does. I'm very, very grateful and um, yeah, can't thank the club enough for giving me the opportunity. Well, they can't thank you enough, Crystal. And, and if you'd like to pre-order your own, you can visit uh, Melbourne Storm, the Melbourne Storm store right now. Jump on the website, go to the store, uh, get there and, and get a piece of this. This is one of the real highlights of the Indigenous Ram, which is such a phenomenal initiative uh, and, a, and a really important one that the NRL do so well every single year. And Robbo, I think you'd agree that that is just brilliantly done. Yeah, as I said at the start, Crystal, we're, we're blessed to have you as our artist this season. You're a wonderful young woman with a great spirit. And I've heard a couple of players already say that this, this jump is the best they've seen and the best one we're going to wear for Indigenous around this week. And, and I'm sure it was a, an amazing experience for yourself to, to do this artwork for us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, especially considering how young I am. I'm only 20, so... And I haven't designed much jerseys in my time, if I'm being honest. Um, so yeah, so very yeah, very grateful for the opportunity to be given, um, yeah, to design it for such an amazing club and to you know display my like to acknowledge and you know proudly represent my people and my culture through through the artwork and to represent the club. Um, yeah, it's something very special. Something Absolutely, I and, I, and by the sounds of it, Robbo, the team really looking forward to putting it on and getting out there against the Brisbane Broncos this weekend. So let's have a look at that side that is going to be wearing this jersey with pride uh, this weekend at Suncorp Stadium against the Broncos. Uh, take us through the lineup, Robbo, and uh, we know that obviously the injuries that we've got, but uh, Nico Hines doing just such a wonderful job at fullback, uh, and the players who have been able to come into this side and make a difference and have an impact has been a real feature. Yeah, again, Jerome Hughes comes back into the team, which he's such a good player, Jerome. He's such a good organiser. And Chris Lewis, again, Playing at 5'8", he did a really good job there. Mm. Um, you know, he's, he's historically a back row and a forward, but he's got a lot of size about him, a lot of leg speed. But once again, we're putting a team out there that can will back ourselves no matter who, we, who we've got on the field and who we're playing against. Uh, and Kenny Bromwich out with that hamstring uh, for another week. And uh, turn our attention to the Broncos side now. So they, it was, they just had to get a win. It was as simple as that. And to do it against the Roosters was their best performance of the year. So they will be up and about, Robbo, full of confidence, uh, and you know that even though it hasn't, they haven't quite been playing the brand of footy that Kevy would have wanted to, you know that they've got the talent to be able to. And again, whenever we play the Broncos, and they're a team that always come and show effort, and I'm sure that's going to happen on uh, Thursday night. And, and it's really nice for us to be able to be the first game and showcase what wonderful culture um, Indigenous Australia has, both Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander. And we, as again, again, we're so blessed to be able to be the first game of that of that round and. Uh, hopefully we'll get off to a good start and get another win for us. No Matt Lodge, no Tyson Gamble. Uh, they're out with suspension. So let's dive into the Red Z preview. The Storm have had a stranglehold in these meetings with the Broncos. They've won the last nine, uh, which has just been a phenomenal record that they've been able to put together. You have to go back to 2016 to find the last Broncos victory. It was 26 to 16, but that was in Melbourne. The last time the Broncos beat the Storm at Suncorp, Robbo, was in March 2009. It was a 16 to 14 win for the Broncos way back in 2009. Oh, that, that statistic when I get spoken about in a team meeting and you know when that ball gets kicked off for the start of the game, none of those statistics or that doesn't matter to us because we, we treat every, every game as just as important as our last game and we make sure that we really honour um, you know, this round our culture and, and, and the best way we talk about honour and people is through effort. And I'm sure the guys will roll their sleeves up and put a good effort in. What impressed you about the Broncos against the Storm, uh, against the Roosters last week? The scoreboard for one. 
Um, I don't know. They just, uh, I think they had a debut player as well. And again, I think they might be having another debut player this week. So the opposition, they come with effort as well. So I'm sure it's going to be a close contest. I'm looking forward to it. Should be a good crowd as well. So for the Storm fans, uh, what can we expect from this younger squad tomorrow night? What do you think that the flavour uh, of the build-up will be for them and, and the message from Craig Bellamy going into a game with one of the other really big clubs in the competition? Uh, yeah, I think the prep will... We're just going to, be, we're just going to get, get in and train now to get ready for uh, tomorrow night. Um, uh, again, he's just consistent in his preparation and to make sure he's... His, um, his team's as best prepared it can be, so they're our best and our worst performance are never far from each other, and um, I'm sure that'll be the case on tomorrow night. Robbo, big thank you to you. Always great to catch up with you uh, in beautiful uh, on the beautiful Sunshine Coast. Uh, enjoy the build-up to this week against the Broncos, and uh, thanks for joining us again on Inside Storm, my friend. No worries. Speak to you soon. That's it for another Inside Storm, proudly presented by Red Z. Red Z is the Australian lender that specialises in providing loans for the self-employed. Uh, Sam Hargroves has been my name. It's been great to have you with us tonight. A big thank you to Robbo and a big thank you to Crystal Petrevsky for joining us in the studio, but also the magnificently designed Indigenous jersey. Make sure you get onto the club's website and get yourself uh, one of these. I'm sure they will be absolutely treasured by the players and all those who get to purchase one as well. We'll see you next Wednesday for another edition of Inside Storm. Broncos this week. Go Storm. Go Storm.